Hi guys, Scott Hutter here and my name is Anil Deshpande. We ended the previous video with so stay tuned for the next video where I will be talking about uh, another very popular library called as Wally to do the API integration. So let's learn Wally. I am sure you are wondering is this just another networking library for Android and why are we learning this particular library when we already have retrofit? Is it complicated than retrofit because that is one of the common perception about Wally. And probably one of the most important question is why the hell it is called as Wally. Well, let's try to understand all of these things. If we try to summarize the overall network operations in Android, you basically have a UI thread and in the UI thread, you start with the API call. Well, you can't do it on the UI thread. So that is why you take the help of a worker thread. You basically throw that request to the worker thread. Worker thread completes that particular request and gives the response back to the UI thread. And this is exactly what you will be repeating each and every time you make an API call in Android. And this pretty much looks like a Wally in a tennis. And that is why probably it is called as Wally. This library has been created by Google you can be pretty sure of pedigree of the library. The next important question is how do I create a request in Wally? Well, Wally comes with lot of ready to use classes like request itself which is at the top of the hierarchy and then there are many subclasses like image request, clear cache request, string request and then if you want to deal with the JSON request and responses then you can use JSON request which are once again subclassed into JSON object request and JSON array request. So this answers the question about how to deal with the request but the another question still persists that is what about the thread management? How are we going to alternate between a UI thread and a worker thread? Well, one thing is for sure that you are basically going to deal with a UI thread and a worker thread or a group of worker threads. However, in Wally, you will have something called as cache thread. Now, it is very important that you understand how these three different threads work with one another to basically create a seamless request response handling. While working with Wally, the first thing that you typically do is add the request to a queue, which is basically a queue of requests. Wally provides lot of customization for you to manage this particular queue that is what should be priority of the each individual request should it be executed on higher priority all those things are there but we will keep the discussion quite simple here to basically understand the overall flow of how the request works in Wally library. So you basically add the request to the cache queue and then you have a, another thread which is called as cache dispatcher. What this basically does is it picks up the request from the queue and proceeds to execute that particular request. Well, there are two flows that can go from here. Now we will consider only one particular flow which is when the data is not already cached on the device side. So that is a cache miss. That means the request will be handed over to the network thread. Well, once again, to make it little bit more efficient, Wally doesn't maintain only one network thread. It can actually maintain a pool of network threads. A request can be handed over to any one of the non-busy network thread so that it can take up and actually hit the backend and parse the response. Once you parse the response, it will write it to a cache and after writing it to a cache, it will basically give the response to the main thread and that is where you go ahead and show the response on the UI either on the fragment or a activity or any one of the widgets on the screen. Once again remember that it is not just one single network thread that we are talking about there could be multiple network threads that might be doing this. So this is one flow where the cache miss happened. However, there is another possibility that cache dispatcher thread will actually hit the cache successfully and find something available in the cache. In that case, it will directly pass the response from the cache and hand it back to the UI thread. Now, this is much more efficient. You don't have to go through the process of hitting the backend, parsing, 
the response from the back end and then handing it back to the main thread. You can basically avoid more resourceful operation of hitting the back end and rather use cached response and immediately give back the response to the main thread. And all this happens behind the scenes. Once you configure these aspects in Wally, everything is taken care by the library itself. The next aspect is actually implementing a bare minimum Wally request and see how it works. For that, we will be using a JSON object request because all of our requests that we have implemented in previous video series are all JSON requests and responses. But what I right now want to do is just leave it as it is, take your time, understand the flow and in the next video I will come back and walk you through how to actually implement a volley request so stay tuned that brings us to the end of this particular video don't forget to like comment share the video and subscribe to the channel take care bye